Welcome back to RetroCAD. Today, we're looking at the digitizer. Often known as that weird multi-button mouse pad contraption that CAD people used in the 80s and 90s. We're going to take a closer look at what it is, what it does, and why you might choose to use one over a more traditional mouse. From its roots in the 50s and 60s, devices like the Stylator and Graphicon pioneered the concept of having an active surface over which a pointer or puck could be used to indicate position. In the late 1970s, the Sumographics Corporation combined these foundational technologies with the power of the Intel microprocessor to create a highly accurate and useful device for companies who designed with CAD. The Sumographics BitPad was one such device, connecting with its serial interface and offering a 5-inch by 7-inch active surface. As technology developed in the 1980s, other companies such as Hitachi and Calcomp brought competing tablets to the market, giving CAD users more options in terms of price, size, and configuration. There were a variety of input devices used with digitizers of this era. Here I am in the mid-80s, drawing an AutoCAD with a Hitachi 12-button puck, much like this one. The ergonomics of this small plastic rectangle were comparable with other small rectangles of the time. The Sumographics Sumasketch features this stylus with its one button of additional power. But out of all the digitizers I have used, the Calcomp drawing board has always been my favorite. Its 16 buttons are comfortable to press, and the device itself sits well in the hand. Although it was available in a wireless format, I prefer the more reliable, wired version that doesn't depend on batteries. So now you know basically what a digitizer is. But what do all these extra buttons do for me in AutoCAD? Let's take a look. All right, two things to cover here. The first one is just the general use of the digitizing tablet with an overlay like this. Often your CAD software will come with a plastic overlay that can be slid into the digitizer and then a tablet configuration command is used where you pick the corners of the menu areas. And that lets the software know where this piece of plastic is in relationship to the tablet. So that when you pick on one of these pictures or icons, if you will, of the commands, you'll get the appropriate one. So if I use the crosshair on the puck and put it over the line command, I go into the line command and so on. More than that, I just want to talk about the configuration of these buttons. There's so many of them, and there's a lot of interesting ways you can program them. I'll show a screenshot of this at the end of the menu that we're using right now to illustrate how we've done this. I also have a button menu drawing here that often we would print out onto a post-it note and just stick on the monitor for people who aren't totally familiar with this button menu. The first row is simple utility functions, picking, double pick, zoom out, right click, simple stuff. After that, we've got some O snaps like endpoint, midpoint, and intersection, and then the pop-up command. So if I press this key, I will get the release 13 pop-up command as we have it customized here. The next row down is perpendicular, nearest, and center, and then a return key. Bottom row is our shift key, which I'll talk about a little more in a moment. Control C, erase, and then a Lisp routine that changes your cursor to 45 degrees and changes it back if it's already set there. So just to cover this first page of the menu, if we're in a line command and we press this first button on the second row, it will go into an endpoint snap. And now we're snapping to the endpoint of a line. It's really convenient and a great way to not have to look away from your screen, look away from what you're working on drawing. So the shift key, when we press this one, and this is the first button on the last row here, it will, for one click, redefine the buttons. So now the commands on the right side are active. So if we pick in the second row, the third button over, that's gonna be circle. So now we're in the circle command, and so on. So really, by using the shifted button menu, you can have most of the commands you need to do your drafting and never have to look away from the screen. That is really the thing that was difficult to move away from as the mouse became more prevalent, as AutoCAD moved to Windows. 
this was a thing that was, you know, it, it's great to have your own workstation with your own tablet, but when you start using other people's computers and regular mouse AutoCAD becomes more and more prevalent, you end up at some point kind of leaving all this behind and making the switch. And that's, uh, that's what happened to me. But it's great to be back here in the RetroCAD seat, working with this again and getting to work with the button menu, the shifted button menu, and all of these cool extra functions. If you'd like to create a custom button menu on a RetroCAD system of your own, here's some code to get you started. Simply open up the menu file you're using with your AutoCAD. Look for the Buttons section at the top of the menu. Here we've created two custom sections, one called ORIG for Original, and a second one called Second. The Shift key is created simply by calling the second menu with a button. On your shifted menu, just include the command $B equals ORIG to call your original menu on each line, and that'll send you back to that first menu. It's really as simple as that. So now you know a little bit more about the digitizer. If you have questions, comments, or stories of your own, please leave us a message here. Go ahead and like, subscribe, or hit that notification bell to be notified when a new episode of RetroCat is released. As always, thanks for watching. See ya.